Okay then gang, so in version 6.4 of React Router, they came with it a few nice new features, which we'll see later in the series. But to use a lot of those features, we have to make our browser router and routes a little differently than before and a little differently than we saw in the last lesson. You can see here on the React Router docs that they actually suggest updating your code to use this newer format. And importantly, this is not yet rolled out for React Native, but it hopefully will be coming at some point in the future. So what is this new router it's talking about and how do we set it up? Well. If we scroll down a little bit, we can see an example of how it is set up. So first of all, you can see in the root component template, we use this router provider component instead of the browser router component, which we used previously. And instead we actually pass a router into the router provider. Now that router is a browser router and it's being created outside of the template, this time up here. So we use this function called create browser router to create the browser router and we store it in this constant. And that's the browser router passed into the router provider component in the template. So before we used a ready-made browser router component in the template, but this time we make that browser router component ourselves, if you like, up here using this function. And then we pass that into the router provider component. Now, the way we make that browser router component inside this function is up to us. There's a couple of different ways to do it. The way that's being shown here is arguably the easiest way and it's the way that we'll be making our routes as well. So we're using another function called create routes from elements and inside that we just have our tree of route components. Just like we had in the previous lesson where each route represents a different page. So let's take this new approach and try applying it in our application. Okay then, so let's go about changing the way that we've done this to match that newer way of working. So the first thing we want to do is actually get rid of the browser router. We don't need this thing anymore. So let's get rid of that. And you'll notice all of this red squiggly stuff because we have multiple root elements. So I'm going to just comment out the header stuff for now. So we just have the main bit here. Now up here, we can get rid of the import, this browser router thing. But what we do need to do is import something else now. And that is that function, create browser router. Now, before I do that, let me just make this a little more readable by putting each one of these on a new line. And then at the top over here, I can get the create browser router function. Okay, so now we wanna use that function to create our router. So down here, I'm gonna say const router is equal to create browser router, like so. And remember inside this function, we used that other function, which was create routes from elements. So click on that, it's going to auto import it as well. Okay, so inside this function, we basically have our tree of routes. So let me just go down here, I'm going to cut this, and I'm going to paste it inside here. So we have this tree of routes now inside this function, which is fine. So we have this route right here, which is the index route. And we have this route right here, which is to the about page. Okay. So now what we need to do is take this router and pass it into a route provider component that we place right here. So let's get rid of this main tag, in fact. Let's do that and just replace it with the router provider component. Click on that to auto import. Should be imported up here, which it is, awesome. And then we use the router prop to pass in a router. We called it router, so copy that and paste it right here. And then this can be closed. So now hopefully this should work because now we have our router provider providing the router that we created using these functions. And inside here, we just have the same tree of routes. Now we're gonna change this shortly. So this isn't the final code. I just wanna test it out so far. Now, if you try this out in the browser as is, then we are gonna get an error. And that's because the way we work with the create browser router function is a little bit different. And it's saying over here that the routes component is not a routes component. So this plural routes component is not actually used when we use this create browser router function. So we need to replace that with a singular routes component. That's how it works. So let's do that now. So the error was complaining that we have a routes component right here and it needs to be just a routes component instead. That's the way we work right here. We have a routes component as the parent element and that means that we can get rid of this import right here. And while we're at it, let's get rid of the link because we don't use that. And in fact, the nav link because everything's commented out right now. And by the way, just to touch on the nav links at the minute, if I was to uncomment this,
if they were in some kind of parent element so we didn't get this error, then these still wouldn't work. And they wouldn't work because they're outside of the scope of the browser router. We pass the browser router right here and the nav links are outside of that scope so they wouldn't work. They have to be within the browser router, if you like. Now, the good thing about this root route component, this parent route component, is that we can actually assign it some kind of element. And that element would act as kind of like a layout component for any routes nested inside it. Okay, so I could say that the element is going to be equal to something. We'll create that component in a minute, and that component would essentially wrap the rest of the page components. So we can put things like a nav bar inside that component where we have nav links. And this time the nav links will work because they're inside the scope of the browser router right here. Okay. Now, the other thing about this route component right here is that we can have a path. So let me add a path right here. And that's just going to be equal to forward slash. So this means it's going to match the root path, right? And then within that, we have an index route as well, meaning it's just the index of the site relative to this path right here. So now let's create a template or some kind of layout component for this route right here, this parent route. So what I'm going to do is actually create a new folder over here called layouts. You don't have to do this. I just like to keep my files organized. And inside that, we're going to have a root layout components. So let's boilerplate this RFC. And this is where we're going to create the layout which wraps the other pages right here. Now we can register that right here by saying root layout. I'm going to click on that to auto import it. And we can see that right here. I'm going to do a comment that says layouts like so. So we're keeping that separate from the page imports. All right. So now let's flesh out this root layout component. All right, so let's get rid of this div right here and instead create a div with a class of root hyphen layout, just in case we need to style it at some point. Then what I'd like to do is get the header. So this stuff right here, I'm going to uncomment that first of all, and then cut it from here. And we're going to paste it inside the root layout. Once we've tidied this up, save that, and I'm going to paste it right here. So now we have this header inside the root layout. Now for this to work, we need to obviously import this nav link component. So let's do that at the top. We can get rid of this because we don't need the React import in later versions of React. So instead, we can say import and it's going to be nav link and that's going to come from React Router DOM. So we have this layout component now and it's wrapping these other routes. Now, this layout component is going to wrap the content of these pages right here. But right now, if we tried this out, all we would see is this content right here and we wouldn't see any of the page content. And the reason we wouldn't see that is because we're not telling React Router where inside this layout component we want to output these page components when we go to these different paths, okay? So to do that, we have to use a component called Outlet from React Router DOM. So I'm gonna import that and then below the header, we're gonna do a main tag and then we're going to do our outlet component like so. And then what that does is when we go to one of these paths, for example, forward slash about or just the root path, it's going to render those components either home or about right here. And then always we would have this header above it. I hope that makes sense. So what I'd also like to do is come to the CSS and I'm just going to paste in one more rule and that's for the page content. So this main tag right here, we say has a max width of 1,200 pixels and a margin of 40 pixels top and bottom auto left and right. So it sits in the middle. So now let's try this out and we should see that we get this layout right at the top of every page. And then where we have this outlook component, we output the different pages nested inside that layout, inside the root route component. Okay, so let's give this a whirl. But actually, before we do try this out in a browser, I've just noticed an error. And this right here needs to be a component. So much like this has angle brackets right here, we need to put angle brackets around this like so. Otherwise, we're going to get an error. So this is a component right here. We're registering with this root route. OK, so now let's try this in a browser. All right. So in the browser, we can see there are no errors. Always a good sign. And when we click between the links, everything is working as it should. Awesome.
So all we've done is we've changed the way we've been working from using the older browser router component to using the newer way where we're using the function to create our browser router and then pass that into a router provider. And this is just a newer way of working. So we have access to some of the new features of React Router that we'll be using later on in the course.